but write down those methods then i will uh, you know uh, we'll just discuss we don't need to see them in fact write down the method data table dot set next row data table dot set next row this method is used to move the cursor to the next row the cursor to the next row from current cursor position if the cursor is in the first row if the cursor is in first row I said set next row, right? Sorry. If the cursor is in the last row, if the cursor is in the last row, last row, then it will move to the first row. Cursor will be moved to the first row. right set previous row i'll write previous row here but not completely don't write completely previous row you say data table dot set previous row just prev is used to here we go move the cursor to the previous row from current cursor position from current cursor position if the cursor is already there in the first row if the cursor is already there in the first row cursor will be moved to last row cursor will be moved to data table dot delete sheet data table dot delete sheet this method is used to delete a sheet in the data table temporarily so sheet name we need to provide as an input data table dot delete sheet delete sheet add sheet is for adding a new sheet delete sheet is for deleting a sheet temporarily okay and few more methods available but i don't explain now later on we are going to implement one framework with the data table so that time few more methods that i will explain you okay but because those methods are not very straight forward okay we need to write logics and all for those methods 
right so that's all about the data table normally you know uh, normally why why the data table is being used here uh, for the data parameterization like normally you can store the data in the data table and then you can uh, retrieve the data into the excel sorry into the script now uh, one of the advantage with the data table is see the methods are inbuilt and all then you don't need to write too much of programming at all to retrieve the data and all. Uh, so very simple uh, coding that you can do to retrieve the data but one of the disadvantages is if you store the data in the data table then uh, the, it can be editable only uh, when you open the test so uh, that that makes a lot of dependency again on the tool so that's the reason we don't prefer to use data table in the reality and when you use excel and all then uh, you know it will be easy for everybody to modify the data so uh, th that's one of the main reason why we don't go for inbuilt data table so the approach what we are going to implement or you know the framework that what you are going to implement in your process then uh, we'll be using excel files than uh, using your data table okay that's it now uh, see uh, normally when uh, you use the data table see, even though you are using the data table now all the inputs you are feeding manually right all the inputs like first you need to give the inputs in the data table then whatever the inputs that you have provided then uh, is, is script will retrieve that right so that means that okay so it's not like automatically generating the data table values are not automatically generating so what you are doing you are providing the values into the data table then script is taking the values that whatever you have provided now just take some situations uh, you know uh, where you might not be able to provide the input manually but you can still provide and uh, some limitations that what you have in this say like okay I, i'm assume that you are executing a script what your client wanted is client wants to generate a report i mean your script has to generate a report the report should say like this first it has to give in the report name of the system in which machine you have executed the script it has to give the name of the user who executed the script name of the user is nothing but the person whoever logged into the application sorry system that guy only executing now see if i am executing the script in my machine then uh, the who executing my wh whatever the username i have used to log into the system then it will come there. also you might need to execute the script on different uh, operating systems like windows 8 8.1 8 and 10 like that so you are you might need to execute the scripts in different operating systems and you are executing in different operating systems so in the report it has to give you know uh, the information like in which operating system you have uh, executed so like this you know you might need to provide the various information in the report right now you say like a very first thing that what i want i want to display the name of the system in which machine i have executed in the report i have to get that now if i want to get that see the name of the system is going to be changed from one machine to another machine right i have one machine name here and if i am executing the script in my machine then it has to give my machine name same thing same script if you are executing in your machine it has to give yeah so now normally what we do we all the scripts instead of keeping it in every machine will be keeping it in something called quality center or maybe some uh, one centralized location from there we will be executing and will be executing in different host different machine so depends on in which machine it is being executed the name should be automatically coming but assume that you are using only data table for the parameterization then it will not automatically fetch that system name what you have to do to write that system name in the report first manually you need to go and check the name of the system based on in which machine you are executing then you have to give that machine name to the data table so the script will take the value from the data table and then give it so if you are executing the script in the same machine then you can directly write that but you don't know in which machine you are going to execute execution to execution the machine is going to be changed sometimes you will be executing the script in four machines parallelly 
four or five machines or different machines. Then in that case, it will be difficult for you to go manually retrieve the system name and then provide the system name there. Right. When you are providing the value from data table, then you have to give the values in the data table. So the script will take the values whatever you have given in the data table. So this will set some limitation there. This will set some limitation. Then in such cases, what should you do? Not only that, name of the user also, name of the system, or name of the operating system, or all, all these things, then will be keep changing from machine to machine, so that I cannot retrieve manually and then provide manually. In such cases, what you have to do? If we have any mechanism where we can retrieve this kind of information automatically by the tool, I mean, if tool can automatically retrieve this information, I'm not providing manually, depends on if I'm running the script in this machine, then script should automatically retrieve the name of the system, name of the uh, operating system which has been used in this, name of the user who logged in currently, like information should automatically come. At the same time, if the same script is in if the same script is executing in your machine, then it should give the name of the machine automatically, your machine name name of the user who or which user name you have used it to log in operating system used in your machine so those things should automatically be retrieved depends on in which machine we are executing so we should not provide such values manually because if we provide those values manually again lot of efforts that we need to retrieve the name of the system and pass it and then that, that is going to be a big headache again so such kind of information should be automatically retrieved then how tool can retrieve that information automatically? That's where something called we say environment variables. That's where we call it as environment variables. Now, so these environment variables are normally used for there are two types of environment variables. One is inbuilt environment variables, and second one is user defined environment variables. So user defined and inbuilt. So this inbuilt environment variables are used for this inbuilt environment variables are used for retrieving this kind of things. Retrieve the basic information about the system. Retrieve the basic information about the tool. Retrieve the basic information about the test. Okay, so retrieve the basic information about the system, basic information about the tool, basic information about the test, test, TST test, whatever the test that you have opened, like name of the test, name of the current action, path of the test, where you have saved this test, like that. Okay, right. Now, how this information can be fetched, right? How we can, uh, I mean, uh, how this information can be fetched through those environment variables. So, for to fetch this information, uh, tool itself has given some of the variables. Those are inbuilt variables for us. Then, by using those inbuilt variables. Then you can fetch the information. 
So these variables are read only for you. This you know variables whatever given by the tool are read only. Then these variables are only to fetch the information. Then you cannot update the values for these variables. So those are called inbuilt environment variables. Inbuilt in a sense given by the tool. That's what that we know already. Now, if you want to see what are the variables available, environment variables inbuilt available, do one thing. Go to File, Settings. Go to File, Settings. Then you say environment. In the File, Settings, Environment. In the environment, you can see there are two types. One is built-in, second one is user-defined. When you say built-in, you can see a lot of variables here, right? All these are the variables. Now we can see the description of each variable. When you say action name, indicates which action is currently running. And when you say local host name, it will say local host name. You can see the name of the laptop has been populated here. When you say OS, you can see the name of the OS. Then version of the operating system, Windows 10, just to build version it is. The product DIR is nothing but where the tool has been installed. Tool information this is. Product name, Unified Functional Testing. For it will say HP Unified Functional Testing and here it is HPE. Product version it is showing 14.0 and for you it might show 12.02, to 12.5 depends on which version you are using. Result DR is nothing but where normally you are saving the results. And then if you see uh, test DIR is nothing but where the test has been saved. And the test name is nothing but name of the test. Username is nothing but name of the user who logged into the system. So like this, we have various variables, but not all the variables helpful for us, but some of the variables are very helpful and uh, we'll be using them in the reality. Now, so we know that those variables are there. How would, uh, we, we have those variables, you know, and those variables are containing the values. But how would we retrieve the values from those variables and pass to the script? How script can retrieve the values from those variables, whatever we have? Then take a simple example here. Now what I have to do is here, when you say I'm entering first name, right? So first name, what I have to do is I should not pass the first name from the data table. First name of the user should be the name of the user who logged into the system currently. Okay. So the data table, you should not take the value from the data table. Name of the, I mean the first name here, employee first name should be same as the user who logged into the system. So why I want like that? Because tomorrow I want to see like, you know, how many users created by you. Then when I want to know how many users created by you, then if I can go by first name, then first name is being unique here, right? Because uh, <coughs> unique to you. For each user, for each system, the username will be changing, right? Are you, you are not going to use the uh, same user for multiple systems? For all the, I mean, right, system to system, then username will be varying. So now even you are, when I'm executing the script in this machine, Whatever the users created in, in this machine, those users will get the first name as the user whom I logged in. Same script if you execute in your machine, then it will give a different name. So by looking at the first name, I can easily understand that, okay, which user creating, which user created this users or these employees, right? Now the question is now I have I said that first name should be name of the user who logged in. So I, I should not hard code it. Now the user who logged into the system is Nanda. But if I hard code like this, again, if the same script needs to be executed in your machine, again, in your machine, I need to go a command chain, right? So that should not be hard coded. Then what should be done here? 
should be automatically fetched and we know that one of the environment variable gives that particular username then i have to get the value from that particular environment variable then how do you get the value from that environment variable then you have a method called environment dot value it's not data table dot value you say environment dot value and you say username username is the variable case sensitive okay environment dot value this method is used to retrieve the value from the environment variable remember the parameter name is case sensitive there see normally username parameter contains u is an upper case and n is an upper case in the username remaining in small case no space is there in the variable name here so environment dot value of username so the same method is for built in environment variables same method for user defined environment variables okay now see what will happen here when i run the script see let it be then what happened here now same if you have used same method uh, environment dot value of username in your machine then your machine will not give this value your machine will give some other value the name of the user who uh, I mean who logged into the system got so how do you retrieve the value now say like i want the name of the operating system that you know uh, which uh, where i am executing then i need that in the report so what i do is here i will write the message reports here i'll say report dot report event in the report i need right so i'll just say mic then means just passing the information environment dot value of i have another operating system called os os means operating system then name of the host name is nothing but name of the system where you have executed i'll say host name then i'll say environment dot value of i have another variable called local host name like this we have a lot of variables then i want the tool version that whatever the version that you have used say eft version then environment dot value of your something called product version product version means it will give the version info anyway i'll stop in between only and go to view last run results anyway script is going to fail but you see the information that which has been passed here then you can see operating system what is the operating system that it is showing here windows 10 and host name name of the system automatically coming eft version the version is automatically coming same if you execute the same lines in your machine then it will it might give uh, you know different values if you are using windows 10 then it will come windows 10 same but the host name and the product version will be different in your machine so you can try if you want 
So now the, the environment, inbuilt environment variables are used for fetching this kind of information. But not all the variables will help us, only few variables like normally, regularly, um, you know, the common uh, values that what we retrieve is operating system, host name and uh, product version and uh, name of the path of the test where the test has been saved and name of the test and uh, username, these things. Okay. So only very basic information. It doesn't give you complete information or every information that what you want. Okay. So this is about inbuilt environment variables. As I told, these variables are only to fetch the values. You cannot store in that. You, 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 you can't store your own value. Okay. Only to, I mean, those are just read only. If you want to change the value, see what will happen. Also, this is the variable. What happened here? OS is built in or external environment variable you cannot modify. That means that you can't modify the value of for that particular variable. That's what the error that it is showing. So inbuilt environment variables are just read only and you can just fetch the values and then you will not be able to write any value into those variables. That's the environment variable. Next. Another one is we have something called inbuilt in sorry user defined environment variables. But in user defined environment variables, we have two types. Environment variables are two types. One is inbuilt and user defined. And user defined again two types. One is internal environment variables, and second one is external environment variables. Now, what is meant by, uh, you know, this user defined and why should we use this user defined when inbuilt are there? Right? When the inbuilt variables are there, then why should we use uh, user defined environment variables? Simple thing. When we have inbuilt functions, in the VP script, why did we use uh, user defined functions again? Because inbuilt functions are not giving everything that we want, right? We inbuilt functions were not solution for everything that what we wanted. So that's a reason in like, you know, by using our own logics and all like whatever, uh, you know, solution that we wanted, we created our own methods. That's what the user defined methods were giving. Same thing is applicable for uh, environment variables also. In the environment variables, See, if you look at the inbuilt environment variables, inbuilt environment variables were not giving the solution for everything that what you wanted. Right? So inbuilt environment variables were, uh, you know, just giving only very basic information, not the complete information that what you wanted. So. Since okay, it is giving only basic information, then that information might not be sufficient for you, you know, to give in the report. So that's the reason what you wanted to do is my, this kind of things like OS name or all those things uh, will be changing from system to system. But some information 
will be common across all the scripts common across all the systems and common across all the scripts for the release but release to release values might be changing but for one release the values will be common across all the scripts common across all the machine same information now let's say here application url the application url will be common across in any machine that whatever you ex wherever you execute the script url will be common right and application version application version will be common for that particular release in all the systems same version so you need to i mean some kind of information that this, this in inbuilt environment variables are giving the information about the machine information about the test but some information some in information basic information you need about the application some basic information you might need about the application and about the database where inbuilt environment variables are not giving the information about the application are not giving information about the database in front of but the such information the database information or application information is common across all the scripts for that release so now since okay this information was not given by the this information was not given by the tool automatically then what you do you store this information in one location and pass the scripts to take this information so this in, in, you know external sorry this uh, uh, user defined environment variables are used for you know two reasons but one reason is to provide some information which can be used across all the scripts and which can be used across all the machines by all the users like the application environment information and database related information like you know that database schema name and database username database password like because those will be common across all the scripts same database you will be using in any machine same server name and the same uh, database username and database password and as well as like you know the application url will be common across all the scripts the master username master password application version all this will be common across all the scripts for that particular release so when you want to store some information about the uh, you know application and some information about the database or the values which can be used across all the scripts the common values then we use this inbuilt in, sorry user defined environment variables but one purpose this is there is another purpose the another purpose is now you say here assume that in your automation you have implemented the automation and you have written the scripts lot of scripts and all and uh, you, you are following the approach like you are using uh, multiple actions in one script or if for one uh, test case you have created two three actions in one test you created two three actions because two three functionalities that you have got there in that uh, flow so now you are using action 1 action 2 action 3 like that you have three actions in uh, test 1 assume that you are in test 1 you have got three actions now in the action 1 some value is being generated like you know you are executing some value is being generated in the action 1 so what you have to do is whatever the value generated in the action 1 that generated value should be passed to the next action should be passed to the next action or further action or not only for that action those some those values need to be passed to some functions external functions so that means what you have to do whatever the value that it is being generated in the script in any of the action what you have to do you need to store the value right where you need to store you need to store it in a memory obviously variable is nothing but a memory now that memory should not be local to the action the memory should be accessible by old test old test is nothing but the remaining actions in the test as well as the libraries also whatever associated to the test that means that memory whatever you have uh, used to store that value that memory should be accessible by the old remaining test in any of the function which you have called inside it or any of the action in within the test right 
so that means the memory whatever you create should be global to the test if the memory is global to the test then that means that it can be accessed in the remaining part of the test anywhere that memory should be accessible by library which is associated by the test we are to the test and it should be accessible by the remaining actions nothing but the global then how do you store the values how do you pass the values between action to action now got what i'm saying what action is generating the value that value needs to be used in some other actions in the, within the same test or that value needs to be used in remaining lines of the test or maybe in the functions also that value need to be passed from uh, action to the library library to action or action to another action like that. so if you want to pass like that then that value has to be globally stored global in a sense not global to the machine global to the test if the glow if the memory is global to the test then that can be accessed by the remaining part of the test so how do you store this values globally and access it at any part of the test then that's where again we use user defined environment variables and this is where two things have been defined i said internal and external right the second one what i told store the value within the test and use it in uh, different actions or different library for that we use in, in internal environment variables but if you want to store some values and use those values across all the scripts in all the machines then we use external environment variables so two things inbuilt environment variables and external environment variables sorry uh, internal environment variables and external environment variables internal environment variables are used for storing the values and use them across the test okay external variables are for storing the values storing the values which needs to be used across which needs to be used across all the scripts in all the machines okay now first we will see the use of internal environment uh, variables and then we will move to the external okay so let me do one thing uh, let me create a new test completely now just for now standing internal environment variables just i i wrote the test name as understanding internal environment variable now we say like this you have got some test now here where this test is generating some value you say that str equal to i'll generate some random number or i'll just enter some value just you say assume i even i am just passing through input box only but just understand that this value is being generated by the application and the value is being stored in the str now whatever the value is being generated here then i am creating a new action call to new action and second action has been created then what should be done this value whatever it is being generated in the action 1 this value has to be passed to action 2 how do you pass the value from this action to this action 
forget about any environment variable. Is there any other option that you can have here? One is internal environment variable you can use, but is there any other option? You need to, the action one is generating some value and I need to use that value, which is, now if you say the variable str here, str is local variable for action one. If the variable is local to the action, then that value, whatever is assigned to that variable is within the action only. Even though if you use str here, then this is one variable, this str is one variable and this str is another variable. Sorry? Yeah, that's right. Huh. Global sheets. Right? So, one solution is you have global sheet in the data table, right? What is the use of global sheet? The global sheet can be accessed by all the actions, right? So what you do now from action one, you pass the value. We, we have seen how we can pass to the, uh, pass the value to the data table, right? So, you know, first you pass the value to the global sheet from, into, uh, from action one. Then from action two, you can retrieve the value from same global sheet. So you can use the global sheet to pass the value from one action to another action. That is one. But the second solution is, the global variable or second third solution is environment internal environment variables then okay so global variables concept have not come in but we, we will understand how we can use the environment variables in this situation how we can use internal environment variables in this situation when you want to pass the values between one action to another action so now what I'm doing is first okay you need to uh, first we'll understand how we can create the internal environment variables First, go to file to create internal environment variables. What you have to do? First, go to file settings. Go to file settings. Environment. And in the environment, you say variable type as user defined. Okay. Then you click on add. Got the path, what I said. Go to file settings environment. Then in the environment, you have to select the variable type as user defined and then you click on add. Now, when you say add here, then it will ask for name and value. Name is mandatory, value is being optional. Okay, so name, you can give anything. So I'll say temp, but variable name, I just given as temp, remember it's a case sensitive and you cannot give the variable name same as inbuilt environment variable name. You say inbuilt environment variable we have OS right and you can't give the environment variable name as OS again but if you change the case it will be taken because it's case sensitive. Okay so remember that now I'm giving as temp and I'm giving the value as empty. Okay well empty value has been given. So if you look at that what happened here the variable has been created name and value is being empty and what is the type type as created as internal and now just remember one point whenever you create internal environment variable once the variable has been created internal environment variable you can change the value anytime you can update the value for internal environment variable anytime but once the variable is created you will not be able to change the name of the variable Remember, once the variable has been created, you will be able to change the value of the internal environment variable, but you will not be able to change the name of the variable. So in case if you have done any spelling mistake for the variable, then what should you do? You can, you need to delete that variable and then you need to recreate it. Now, so what I have done here? 
have created one internal environment variable. Now that internal environment variable is accessible by all the actions of the test, not only the action, I mean, actions within the test. If the libraries are associated to the test, then the environment variable, internal environment variable can be accessed by all the libraries which are associated to the test. Not all the libraries which are saved in the system. The libraries which are associated to the test, then those libraries also can access the internal environment variable. So internal environment variable is accessible by the actions within the test and the libraries associated to the test. Now what you have to do now, in the action one, the value is being generated, right? So what you have to do from action one, you need to pass the value into the internal environment variable. So internal environment variable store the value and from the same internal environment variable, you can access the value in action two. So that means from action one, you pass the value to internal environment variable. From action two, you retrieve the value from same internal environment variable. Then the question is now, how do we retrieve the, how do you pass the value to the variable? How do you retrieve the value to, from the variable? Same method as I told earlier, what, what is the method I told? Environment dot value, right? You can use the same method. You can use the same method. Then how the method would be, now we say environment dot value of, you have something called, what is the variable that I have created? Temp equal to str. What I am doing? Passing the value. Now from action to what I am doing is, you can use any other variable name also or same variable name. I said str1 equal to environment data value. Same method. So if you are using the method at right side and variable at left side, then you are retrieving the value from this method and passing the value to the variable. If you are using variable at right side and method at left side, you are passing the variable value to the method. That's it. Now, let me execute this and then see whether it will uh, work or not. Now, I will pass some value here and see that value is being displayed in the action to us. Right? Now, the value whatever I have passed to this input box in the action one, that value is being accessible in action two also, right? Now, how that will work? Now, just let me execute that. Again. This line is not executed yet. Go to file, settings, environment, user defined. What is the value of this variable now? Empty. Because this line is not yet executed. Now let me execute that line. Now that environment that value equal to str, that line has been executed. Now you go to settings, environment, user defined. What is the value? Can you see that value is, I mean, whatever the value that I have assigned, that value has come into the inbuilt environment variable. Now, if you run it, so the value has been fetched from that variable. Now, once, okay, the execution is completed, what will be the value of that variable? Whatever the value what I have assigned, will that value there or will not be there? What happened? Empty. That means that whatever the value that you are updating during runtime, that value is temporary. Just it temporarily store that value, right? Once the execution is completed, what will happen? The value will be eliminated from that. So that is just a temporary storage. If you update the value during runtime, that value will be available only during runtime. Once the execution is completed, then it will be gone. Next, there, there is one more thing that you need to know. What I did now? I deleted it. So what I am trying to do here? I am updating the value into the variable. I mean, uh, the variable name is temp. But is that variable available now? So I am trying to update the value into a variable which is not available now. Then what will be the output? Error. Okay, let's see whether it will throw the error or not. Go 
to file settings environment no variable that line is executed did it throw the error that line is executed but no error has come let's see what happened it's creating so when you say internal environment variables when you want to use internal environment variables to store the values temporarily then you don't need to create the internal environment variables manually so the internal environment variables can be created through the script during runtime itself that means you don't need to declare the variable manually you don't need to create the variables manually and all when you say environment dot value of so and so variable name then in case if that variable is existing then it will update the value for that particular variable in case if that variable does not exist then it will create the variables it will create the variables so it, yeah if the name is changed like it, it will be treated as a new variable it creates a new variable if one character is misspelled and also the case is changed say Here I have used a small case, but name is same, right? Name is same, but what I'm using here also I'm using temp, but case is different. File settings. What happened? A new variable has been created. Same thing is applicable for misspell also. Okay, if you misspell it, it will not think that you have misspelled. What it what it will think is okay. User wants to create a new variable, and then it creates the variable. That's it. So if, when you are using internal environment variables to store the values manually, you don't need to create the variables first. Whenever you say environment dot value of new variable name, it automatically creates and store it and stores it in global. So whatever the variable you create. then that variable will be available in the remaining lines of the code within the test in the remaining actions so the internal environment variables are used for this when you have i mean when you have written the script and the values are being generated if you want to store the values temporarily to access them in the remaining part of the code then you can make the use of internal environment variables so the purpose of internal environment variables are used to i mean the purpose of internal environment variables are to store the values which can be accessed globally global to the test which can be accessed across the test in the libraries or in the remaining actions okay so the internal environment variables are accessed in all the actions of the test in all the libraries that's the purpose of internal environment variables okay so you don't need to create the internal environment variables manually internal environment variables can be created during run time also okay now what is meant by external internal means where you are creating within the test and those variables can be accessed within the test what is mean by external outside the test if you create the variables outside the test then those are external and outside means where you create libraries means external libraries means where you create where you store the functions externally we the function libraries you created vbs file or qfl that's what i told if you want to store the objects externally you created shared repository which is tsr similarly the environment variables also if you want to create externally those have to be saved in one file the external environment variables also should be stored in one file then this time the environment variable file can be in two different extensions one is xml extension second one is ini ini 
initialization file it is so there are two things i and i i n i so environment variables can be external environment variables can be stored in two different uh, extensions one is the xml dot xml second one is ini extension so obviously the xml the name itself says that those variables are saved in xml location okay fine so i'll stop now i'll stop this tomorrow i will show you this okay and tomorrow we are going to discuss very very key concept again once after uh, this is completed